can compare fractions using models. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to compare two fractions, which one is greater than, less than, or equal to. When we do that, we're going to use the greater than, the less than, or the equal to symbol. Um, I'm going to also show you a cool trick as to how to know which symbol to use. Obviously, you're going to use equals when they're the exact same amount. But for example, when you have one third is less than two thirds, keep in mind that can also be written as two thirds is greater than one thirds. So it's telling me the exact same thing, it's just telling me it in a different order. And that's, that's all right, you just need to make sure you switch the symbol. So when we compare if the denominator is the same, that's straightforward and simple, just like comparing um, regular whole numbers in that, say I have one fourth and two fourths. What I do is I just look at the denominator. Oh, it's the same. So now I'm comparing the numerators. Once this is the same, I'm dealing with fourths. It's like thinking a quarter and two quarters. What's more? Oh, two quarters because two is greater than one. So what I do is I give the bigger fraction two dots. And I give the smaller fraction one dot. And then I connect the dots to draw my symbol. So I have one fourth is less than two fourths. Over here, you have three sevenths compared to six sevenths. I see my denominator is the same, so I'm just comparing my numerators. I see that six is greater than three, so this fraction gets two dots, and this one gets one dot. The bigger fraction gets two dots, the smaller fraction gets one. Then I simply connect the dots. Three sevenths is less than six sevenths. If you use this dot strategy, it'll make sure your symbol points the same way, points the correct way every time. What if the denominator is different? That's where it gets challenging. So if the denominator is different, we can one way to do that is to use models. So you can use models to compare. There are other ways to compare fractions without models, but I'm going to first show you that way. So say we have 2 6 and 3 4 so we're going to compare them. If you have a model, make sure your whole is exactly the same. So we're pretty much the same whole here. I've split this up into close sixths and close fourths. And you can clearly see that the fourths covers more space. Three fourths has more space covered than just two sixths. So when I'm comparing them, it means that two sixths is less, so it gets one dot, and three fourths is more, so we'll get two dots. So when I come over here, I put one dot by the two sixths, two dots by the three fourths, and I connect them, so two sixths is less than three fourths. A number line model is very similar to what we just saw with those rectangles, except you have just a number line. So this one is 6, 0 to 1. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equal parts, and we're looking at 5, 6, which is here on the number line. Then you have down here 8, 5, 8. So I have 0 and 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 equal parts. So my denominator is 8, here is 5, 8. Notice that my 1 and my 0 are lined up. So my number lines are lined up to accurately compare where each fraction falls. And I can see that 5 eighths is closer to 0 and 5 6 is closer to 1. That means that 5 6 is going to be the larger of the two fractions. So that will get two dots. And 5 eighths will only get one dot. Now I can come down here to my comparison. 5 6 gets two dots. And 5 eighths gets one dot. I connect my dots, 5 6 is greater than 5 eighths. I can compare fractions using models. So here's a model of 1 third, and here's a model of 4 eighths. Take a look, which one has more shaded? Assign that one two dots. Assign the lower one one dot. Connect your dots. How does 1 third compare to 4 eighths?